All right, welcome back to Maple Lanes here for our championship round of the Johnny Petraglia BVL Open. Craig Elliott, Tom Carter here on this stepladder final. And, Tom, yet again, like every week on this tour, we have a stacked top five. Way too many majors. <laughs> Just yeah. way too Only many majors. Only six of them in the, in the group. That, that's a ton. We're starting out with the guy that's led the last three out of four tournaments. He won last week. He led this tournament. Unfortunately, he lost in the match play round against John Janowitz. It put him in fifth. But Tom Hess is obviously a, f a player to be reckoned with because you know you can walk the ladder. Yeah, he's a force. I mean, we talked earlier during qualifying. We haven't seen anything like this until Pete Weber a few years back when he won four in a row. Last one we can think of this type of dominance. Joining Tom in that step later, Brad Angelo, just as so much dominance. Seems to me like he makes every single show here on this tour. Well, he, he does. I mean, what he. 19 out of 44, but before he gets to there, he's got to beat Troy Lent, the sole lefty in this field. Last year's yeah, player of the year. Last year's player of the year. We got player of the year. Um, and he won. He's got two titles. And what was that? <laughs> a little speaker action there. And, of course, our number one seed, the former USBC Masters and PBA 50 Masters champion, Chris Warren. Well, you know, this is Chris is the oldest player in the field. He's 60 years old. He's won like 58 regional titles. And he's got a look that nobody else has got because he still throws a conventional grip. So it's going to be interesting. But we're forgetting one guy that's really important, J.J. in third spot. You know, last year's uh, rookie of the year, he won two majors. He won the tournament of champions on this pattern. Yeah, so we've got our rookie of the year, our player of the year, Tom Hess, who just wins everything. Thing. Right. Brad right. Angelo, who tries to win everything, makes every single show. <laughs> yeah, he's and on every Chris week. Warren, who's won 58 regional titles, six regular titles. He's going to be one of those guys in that uh, the Veterans Category Hall of Fame someday. Well, and I think the player might be, and I'm going to pull a guess, it could be Brad Angelo because he finished second last week. Well, we're about to find out. Practice is done. Uh, we missed the announcement there, but we did our PBA salute to veterans, our salute this week. Of course, Vietnam veteran, PBA Hall of Famer. Tournament named after him, Mr. Johnny Petraglia. And he's here. Uh, w what a great person to have to represent the BVL. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So we're just a couple minutes ahead of schedule, actually. Chris Warren, oddly enough, so I don't need no practice. I'm good. <laughs> Which, you know, I guess it makes sense, right? He'd be sitting for an hour. He can go down on a practice lane. What he sees now is well, not what he's going to see in an hour and a half. Well, that's true. He's, you know, Chris is a smart enough player. He can watch the other right-handers, yeah. and he can see what's going on. And when he comes over to get his practice, it's going to be – you'll figure it out. Yeah. Tom Hess will start on the right lane with two frames. But I'd like to introduce the two first-round bowlers with two PBA 50 national titles, nine, nine regional titles, he last year won the 2023 PBA 50 U.S. Open and the 2023 Morgantown Classic, and he was named the 2023 PBA 50 Player of the Year, Troy Lynn. Troy Lynn, I think the sole lefty in the field, if he can stay healthy, he's got a bad knee, but if he can stay healthy, he could be a force to be reckoned with. Look, I mean, let, let's just throw it out there now. The one thing we watch with Troy, he misses some spares in, in key situations, right? He strikes a ton. Sometimes those misses don't hurt him, but in a stepladder single-game match, those yeah. just get amplified, yeah, so you only kind of watch for that. And you don't expect Tom Hess to give you any openings whatsoever. Tom Hess hasn't begun in any openings. The only reason he's in fifth after being tournament leader and losing to Janowitz, he got a little confused on the left lane in that match. And he had two error frames, which allowed Janowitz to go around him. Yeah, yeah, late 17 really got him. Janowitz was able to figure it out. But another thing we want to touch on real quick as these players get started. Uh, all five players got together before this event started here, the step later tonight, and they all made the unanimous decision. They are donating 5% of their winnings to BVL tonight. That's incredible. That's awesome. That's, that's a nice chunk of change. Oh, that's a ch yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a couple thousand dollars, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's very nice. That's fantastic of these guys. We're going to start things off now with Mr. Troy Lint. It's hard to believe that Troy's a senior player with this backswing. Yeah, he gets it up there, doesn't he? We've had a good time teasing, or I've had a good time teasing Troy this weekend. So, dude, just hit the head pin. They all fall down. He's like, come on. Oh. But he just generates so much power. He can get the ball going away from the head pin, and it still strikes. The, what, his axis rotation into the pins just throws pins sideways. I mean, he doesn't have to be flush pocket. He, he has messengers almost every shot he throws. Hey, if you're jealous, Tom, say you're jealous. I, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. 
With a, that, that was high flush. That was, that yeah. was not bad. And, you know, and again, I, he's got a little chip on his shoulder after not getting the number one seat again, right? He wants that number one seat. He understands what it means. Win a match, you win the title, guaranteed money, all that stuff. He's out here to win. So it's kind of like Pete years ago, right? You didn't want to bowl Pete when he was upset. Oh, no. You don't want to bowl Tom when he's upset. upset. No, when Tom gets upset, it's kind of like Pete. He, whatever happens to his focus, it just beelines in, and he just starts striking for, like, days. Looks like maybe the yeah. DNA coil. Is that what he's throwing? <clears throat> absolute power. That one was? I think that was an absolute power. Well, I was talking absolutely about, obliterated yeah. the pins. Danny Wiseman, who... He beat Wiseman 241 to 238 one game and 279 to 276 the next game. There was only seven pins difference in but, those two matches. Yeah, and Wiseman gave him a couple opportunities, and Tom took advantage of him. Troy Lent throwing an archetype. That, he said, is his favorite favorite ball. When you get to throw your favorite ball on a pattern like this, you got to like it. I think the big difference for Troy this year, you know him uh, fairly well, right? He, he was not 100% last year, not 100% this year, but he's, you know, last year he was probably 50%. This year he's, he's 75, 80%. Yeah, you that's, watch that's him. Scary. He's going to be bending that right knee a lot uh, when he comes back because it's still not right yet, but it's better than it was last year. And this guy bowls through pain unbelievably. I mean, just you talk about a guy that can just grit your teeth and throw a shot. That's him. Does it with a smile too. Great temperament, great attitude. He's been a nice addition to this tour the last couple of years. I got some interesting information about JJ. I found out, but I'm going to wait until JJ gets on the lanes to talk about it. But it's pretty cool stuff. We talked about it last week. Bowling fans, we call that in the business a tease. <laughs> and we call that 10 back. <laughs> we, we call that a tie so far. It's both of them, three baggers. Did you do that in your head, the math on that one? I did. Nicely you know, done. Hey, there's a possibility of a tie, which <laughs> is 300. Is. <laughs> there is. We almost had it earlier in one of the matches as well. Actually, in, the, in that, that, uh, that Hess... Uh, um, Right here. Wiseman. Wiseman match, you, yeah. They both first went, word went sounds front, like. They both went front nine. <laughs> yeah, Danny uh, said he just, he didn't think the last shot was quite good, so he just tried to catch a little bit more of it, and he did. Six count. Yeah, 276 and lost. That's that's tough. How about oh, that? How about that kicking out that 10? Take him out at the knees. One thing Tommy has, his axis rotation and tilt this season have matched up on every pattern. It almost looks like what you said earlier, when Pete Weber was dominating a couple of years ago every tournament. And it, it doesn't make any difference what the pattern is. It looks like every week we see him playing the same part of the lane, doing the same thing. This Johnny Petra oh, that was a little right, There's an opening. This Johnny Petragler pattern was a little bit tricky because everybody thought we could start a little bit farther right, and in the practice rounds it looked like we could. And then when they re in the practice round, everybody was right. But then when the tournament started, everybody was left. I mean, they started in between the third and fourth arrow, and some guys started at fourth arrow from the get-go. But then we thought we are going to see a bunch of loft, and we didn't see that either. So nope. it kind of just forced everybody between, like, third and fifth arrow. Yeah, depending on what you did. I think Chris Barnes might have got the deepest of anybody lofting it over the left gutter. But it almost played a little bit like fallback. Yeah. And a little bit, I mean, you had a little bit of hook and you had a little bit of fallback. So you just had to get your feet far enough left and your eyes far enough left to find that shim, that oil line. One thing you couldn't do is get it right quick. <laughs> that was bad juju. Try taking a little time there, really kind of. He's, he's working that gum. He always working that gum, but he, he, he's kind of deep in thought there. He just put gum in before he started, and he already had gum in his mouth. He's opened gum, and he opened three pieces, and I'm thinking, you already got gum in your mouth. How many pieces do you need? So he spit out the th whatever he had in his mouth and put another three in. So Can you get him a bag of that big league chew? Remember that? <laughs> yeah, big old chaw gum in your in your left cheek there 
Hey, if it makes you throw it like him, I'd get a whole mouthful. Yeah. He needs his own line of, of chewing gum. Oh, that didn't look like that was going to stand. And I, Tommy's standing up there on the approach going, yeah, I didn't think it was supposed to stand either. Uh, he's having flashbacks from that last game against J.J. when he just couldn't knock on all ten pins, just wasn't getting the – he was hitting the pocket, just couldn't get to go through the pins right away. Well, not to black cat anybody, but Tommy's a great spare shooter, so I have no doubt about this. It's just – the, the big thing about Tommy, and we, we said it earlier, I mean, if he gets mad, he gets really focused. But if he gets frustrated, that's something different. Absolutely, yep. A whole different level of uh, emotions going on there and, and blood pressure. Still both players with max score, 279 apiece. Tommy looked like he moved in a little bit on that cross around 18 at the arrows, you know, just kind of. And with the amount of surface that some of the guys put on the balls, I can see that by the time Chris Warren gets here and the balls that he'd been throwing had a lot of surface, they might be in fifth arrow by then. There's a possibility. There's a real good possibility. We see a look at the trophy there, left side of your screen. Johnny Petraglia, BVL bowling ball. Those gentlemen just over top of that bowling ball. John Laspina, Johnny Petraglia, and Bill Moore. The stuff that those three gentlemen do for the BBL charity is second to none. A lifetime of service to the charity for John and I think Johnny. I miss, don't misquote me, but I think they're right at a hundred thousand this year, which is crazy. No, they're almost they're almost uh, they're, they're hundred thousand over last year's right. score. Well, okay, that's they're over. I heard the, year. I heard the number. Yeah, they're over ninety thousand just in this bowling center. They've already exceeded the million dollar mark this season. Looking to uh, go over last year's final 1.4 with a goal of $2 million next year. So anybody out there, if you're interested in getting involved, bbl.org, check it out. And I know Johnny was on earlier. When he, he talks about uh, his time in the military, he gets a little choked up. But he's very passionate. Absolutely passionate, and we appreciate every bit of that passion. And as we talked earlier, too, it, it, Johnny's not an employee of BVL. No. He's done this for over 50 years on his own time. That's, I mean, what, what's that tell you about what kind of guy he is, right? Yeah. I mean, we can't even get you to work for free, Tom. I mean, come Oh, on. my God. <laughs> uh, Johnny is fantastic what he does for the sport and for BVL. Tom Hess looking to uh, that was things interesting in, yeah. here. Yeah, he knows it. That's the look on his face. So yeah, I threw it. Like, that was left a target off of his hand. Troy Lent, three-bagger, spare, another three-bagger. Tommy has started out with four. Oh, three, six, ten. Everybody at Everbowls loves that spare because it is so easy to pick up. <laughs> yeah, you can take the six out of the middle. You chop the three, six. You can chop the six, ten. You can take the ten off. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, t you can take we, the six we, out of the middle. guys this year take out the three, ten, leave the six. It's right. Like, what the heck? I always say there's like two ways to make it and about 900 ways to miss it. <laughs> yeah, he knew he's, that was a much better shot. Just, yeah, he's that was, dead that was the, I'm annoyed, just throw it like you're supposed to and be done. I actually saw Thomas Larson make it this year at a PBA stop where he hit the 10, 10 bounced out of the pit into the 6-3. Well, that's a textbook. That's probably not the way Nelson Burton would tell you to pick it up. No. Troy and Lint with a big advantage now after that miss spared by Tom Hess. Again, another half pocket hit that just shreds racks. Half pocket. How about, okay, third pocket? Maybe. Fourth, fourth yeah. pocket. Maybe. Hey, he barely hit the head pin, all right? All right. But his tempo to the line, I mean, for a guy that has such a high backswing, his feet aren't fast. He has got a power step. 
but his rhythm and tempo makes his swing look effortless. I mean, normally guys that get the ball that high have to really pull down. Right, and that pulls to, you out to, balance. To try to create yeah. balance, then they fall off, or they try to create timing by pulling down, but then they fall off balance. But you watch him. I mean, it's literally pure rhythm. One, two, step, and then just, and he's solid every shot. It's almost like, like, a, like, a, like a dance, right? That one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's like he's doing a waltz. Is that the dance he taught you back in the 30s? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, a, did a lot of waltzing. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the frustrated yeah. time right there. And both those shots off his hand, he's like, what? why didn't I just do that? I mean, he knows well, off his hand immediately. He had trouble on that left lane against Janowitz, and then he switched balls, and the ninth and 10th, he pured every shot. And I know that's exactly what he was thinking. Why did I do that sooner? But well, you know, we sit here uh, watching this. Like, so Brian, he's he's striking out the tenth on lane seventeen. That's there's no doubt in my mind, and he did. Just you know, at that point, it was kind of like your fill ball strikes ninety eight point four percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Now there is pure frustration because you're hardly ever going to see Tom Hess leave a five pin. Yeah, got a little, a little frisky on that one. Amped up to speed a little bit. Uh, we're going to see Troy Lint move on here and take on John Janowitz. We're going to have Rookie of the Year versus Player of the, of the Year last year. I don't remember that happening in, in a while. Yeah, yeah, we've never talked about I mean, that. Tom Hess was both one year, so he couldn't yeah. bowl against himself. Right. Right. So, so that well, wasn't happening. Was it Parker last the year before? Was Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. Before that was, was it Walder? Who was rookie there when Parker was player there? Somebody out there is looking it up right now. Yeah, they'll let us know. Back in what have been, what, 2020? Tommy Hess strikes on his final shot, 226, but Troy Lent <laughs> still shooting at a 279 pace. Well, Troy's in his favorite ball time. Is he going to even, is he going to bother trying something else right now? I mean, he's, well, he's, he's, got, he's, he's got, like, it, got it wired. They, well, he's got it wired, but he's got a stealth down there that looks really good, too. So it all depends. I mean, the surface on that archetype, we hit it with 500 and then went over the top of it with 2,000 just to knock the spikes off, kind of what we call skip sanding, mm -hmm. just so that it made it through the heads so it would read the mid lane pretty strong and be more continuous on the back end. At first when he threw it, because obviously any time you sand a ball, it reacts violently kind of the first couple of shots. But once it mellowed out, well, you see what happened. There's the stealth right there. A little, little harder off the spot. Yeah, you know, you, th you go from an ASIM ball to a symmetrical ball with a fresh cover. And it, yeah, I got down the lane, but once it reads the friction, it's going. And the I only person that's going to mess up his shot is him. Stick with the, stick with the other ball then. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not time to stealth yet. Yeah. You know, until it, if it starts well, laboring too much. But as long as he's scattering pins, I don't think he's going to switch. So you think if he starts coming in a little light and ball maybe quits on him, that's when it's time to switch. leaving seven pins, you know, or not going through the pins the right way. You see it hit the pocket, go dead left. 226, 267, game number one. Tom Hess finishes in the five spots. Let me put you on the spot, Tom. What do you like in this match? Player of the year, rookie of the year. You just saw Troy shoot 267. I'm he knows what ball to throw. I'm still liking Troy. Okay. I mean, it's hard to go against John Janowitz because he knows more about what the oil pattern is going to do than anybody on the planet. And when you can almost see the lane break down in front of you and see the oil, it's kind of tough to beat a guy that knows that much. <clears throat> but he's still got to throw the ball. Right? It's still kind of mind-boggling that, you know, Troy is our player of the year. Two titles. One's a major. Janowitz, rookie of the year, but Janowitz has more experience in these situations with right. what he's done over the last, you know, several decades in his career. Well, Janowitz is bold just way more, you know, and traveled the world and bold, you know, being on Team USA. I mean, I don't know if there's any situation that hasn't he hasn't run into. I mean, I don't care what it is from 
bowling overseas in a center that doesn't have any air, it could be hot, to one that's frozen, to lane conditions that are unbelievable. Uh, when you get, that's what I was worried about. A little lazy. Right there. Yeah. Not having any practice shots, he might take a shot or two to warm up, and that could be a bad thing against Janowitz. Well, and also, you know, this house where, where Maple Lane's here at Countryside and Clearwater, like an hour from J.J.'s hometown, he bowls all sorts of events in Florida. He's bowled in the center a lot. He knows. He takes notes. We see his notebook, the intricacies of a center. So he knows the patterns. He knows the center. He's not going to get tricked. So to me, this is a tough one to call. I just wished uh, Troy might have taken a shot or two just to stay a little bit loose, but – you know, when your knee hurts and you've already had it operated on, you kind of want to protect it. But from a guy that knows about knees, you got to stay loose because once they start to tighten up, it takes a few shots to get them loose. Well, and, you know, we talk again, there's that big hesitation uh, for John Janowitz. You know, with John's experience, you picked up on the fact that Troy didn't take practice shots. I guarantee you J.J. did too. So, you know what, if I'm J.J., just go a little bit slower in those practice shots in your warm-up, right? Right. I mean, let's let's well, stall. Sure. Why not? I get so many. Yeah. There's no and, time and, limit. And use your use a re-rack on this next shot. Just, <laughs> I mean, try stalling one shot. Right. I mean, that would be a veteran move. J.J., when he walks back, you almost kind of got to giggle to yourself because the look on his face, he always looks like he's either confused or the thought, the computer is just going. <laughs> it looks like he's got to go to the bathroom. I mean, come on, let's just say it. That's what it looks like. A mile a minute like thinking just, about stuff. I said a chili cheese dog is not settling well. <laughs> I wasn't going there, but okay. You know I'm right, though. That's the absolute par for sure. He pured that shot. He sure did. And he's going right to the notebook. No, he's going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. He put on his footy, and he took off running. I just hope he goes back with a different ball. I'm just saying. Troy Lynn sticking with the same ball, that archetype. You just wonder, you know, he has the – since he does kind of repeat shots, obviously, because you know, being player of the year, you got to repeat something. That ball looks like it's labored now. Yeah, and I don't think he, he didn't throw that one. You saw his reaction. Like, uh, yeah, just, I, I don't but, know if he moved a little right. I think that was stiff. But the ball definitely didn't check up. So this might be a time to switch to the stealth or that other ball down there he was throwing to give him a little more back in. <clears throat> Oh, it's got a hook. Okay. I, I was I was only slightly worried. You must have been a lot worried. It hadn't even got 15 feet, and you're going, it's got a hook. <laughs> yeah, a little worried. Just because you throw it 100 in that direction, it uh, might wouldn't have hooked. Uh, I mean, like, I, I've seen Troy shoot spares. He, he, he can blow by him, you know. He's going to need a new set of gum. That's it. Imagine when he turns in his expense report for the year of the IRS. What's this $2,000 in gum? That's, that's, that's a work expense. That looks better. Yeah, right off his hand, that was just better better everything, wasn't it? It was better everything, but he turned around. It was like, it was almost like he didn't like that shot. But obviously it struck, so what's going through his head? I need more gum. I need more gum. Making sure JJ took that booty off. Oh, that would be all bad. Hesitation. He does. Uh, does he still have that slide pad on us. Uh, he does. He was wearing it earlier this week. If you've seen JJ's shoes, it's a mismatch of slide pads. I mean, none of them are cut to size, I and mean, they hang out all over the place. It's like he, he went and got borrowed somebody else's shoes.
JJ doesn't have a lot of surface, and, and you didn't really need it on the right side, a lot of surface on your equipment. I mean, literally, a light 2000. That checked up way early. Yeah, he's kind of looking at it like, mm, okay, what what happened there? Well, this Johnny Betragli pattern is a little, little tricky depending on the volume. Yeah, 46 foot, what are you, about a five and a half to one, 30, about 30 mils. Well, five a lot and of it in the middle. <clears throat> Well, five and a half to one out here, is, which it was, is a real high-scoring pattern. You get more like two to one, scores tend to drop a little bit compared to your house shot, which could be 15 to one. He hasn't switched yet. You hear him say, go, go, go. It went. Well, the last one didn't make the turn. Leaves the 3-9. This one just went sideways. So he might have, when he came back after his last shot, he's looking at his hand like, I need to get more under it. I got to get more of it. It felt like maybe he missed it off his hand. But he got, he got enough of that one. Is this the point, Tom, where I think we both believe he might be in the wrong ball, but he's maybe he's thinking, I just didn't throw it good. And you kind of trick yourself at that point, right? Ooh. He's going to make the change. Giving J.J. an opening is not really what you want to do. No. He's, I mean, down here, his match against David Leverage, it looked like he was going to lose the match. You know, they were both kind of lost. Uh, Dave wins one. He bar J.J. barely wins the second one. But in the third game, he throws the front ten. And like out of nowhere, right. he, he found something. And a, a wrap ten for Troy on that shot. J.J. smelling blood in the water now. Brad Angelo warming up down on the practice lanes, getting ready for this next match. Brad runner up last week. Brad's been throwing the ball absolutely fantastic. I mean, he's done everything but win. Yeah. For a guy, that's, I mean, he's a student of the game he teaches. And he's just, he's pure rhythm also going to the line. Kind of the same type of approach as J.J., just not quite as much hesitation. Minimal hesitation there. That creep a little high, high flush. Yeah. So he's crossing like 22, 23 at the arrows, taking it out to like nine. So the less hesitation, the more ball speed he has, the more hesitation, the slower he can throw it. So if you're at home working on stuff, that might be something to try, especially if you have trouble slowing down. I'd have to pause for about 12 seconds. That was, that was like 24 out to 8. I mean, he's pretty he, much lined he in. He liked that one a lot. Troy's either going to have to switch, but I think he's a little scared of that stealth because it, it was so angular on the back end when he did throw it in that one practice shot, and he's picking the archetype up again. I mean, if he doesn't do something here pretty quick, it's going to be all over for him. And I don't know if it, his knee's hurting to the point that he can't really just get into the shot. No, he yeah. fell off. Right. Yeah. yeah, right there. You see him flex. Yeah, he flexed his knee. His knee's giving him those, trouble. Those ones, little stingers. You get that little. You know what that one feels like. That yeah, little, little well, rubber band popping there. And 
his exact words. He, he said, I, I can't dig into the shot when I need to when it, it starts to hurt. And I think the knee the knee is going to beat him. Five and a fifth strike up in the sixth. About a 40 pin deficit right now for yeah, Troy Lynn. The best he can do is 20, 25, and he didn't post that shot. No. And I don't want to call it done, but I think the pain is overriding the effect that he can throw the ball. Hate to see that, too. He's having his best term of the season. Hasn't bowled up to his expectations, but he's bowled, you know, in his words, you know, almost pain free for, you know, for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And finally seeing the results, and now things start to hurt. Well, you know, when you get something fixed, and, yeah, it's hurting. He's done. That's uh, He's just going to kind of bow out and finish the frames. But, you know, when you get something fixed and you figure it's fixed and the pain goes away and you've been practicing but when you come out here, it's a lot different because there's a lot more bowling, there's a lot more practice, there's a lot more intensity. And it might have been fixed, but it isn't fixed for long. Yeah, you definitely aggravated it. What do JJ. you know about what do you know about fixed parts and uh, yeah. <laughs> I got so many of them. They you have anything in your body that's not been repaired? <laughs> yeah, well. The, and they want to replace that knee again. That's called a revision, and that scares the living day. Oh, that's called a me. refund off the first one. Uh, <laughs> it's only been six years. It's scary as hell. Anyway, J.J., throwing an attention star. Now, that is one. I mean, it's super clean down the lane, and obviously it's got a bunch of back end. Uh, we're going to see uh, John Janowitz, Brad Angelo semifinal match here at Maple Lanes in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, I guess the good news for Troy is there's a little break in the action before the Masters. Yeah, he got a couple days. I, uh, he obviously, he's not old enough for the Super Senior Classic, which is kind of like the Super Senior Masters. That starts the 29th of May, and right after that is the Masters. Uh, so uh, he's got uh, about 10 days. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have to throw a ball again until June 3rd practice session out there. I'm sure he'll throw a few at home. But got a little break to rest the body now after being out here for a couple of weeks and, and do maybe do a little more rehab. And well, He said uh, as soon as he got done today, he was in the car 19 hours home. He, so he's looking to get home. I bet he can do an 18. Pay the ticket. Get home faster. <laughs> and that one strikes, of course. We're back in a zone where everything's relaxed. Now you're not pressing, you're not trying to make a strike, and, and it will. So J.J.'s now in a spot where he'll get a couple of shots to play around. You think well, yeah, he can play around, that? switch balls, and do all kinds of things if he wants to, or... He's just going to keep doing what he does, and that's uh, smash the pocket. That's a ball change. <laughs> JJ, he's still analyzing. He comes back, and uh, that boy's amazing. If I could stand it for about 30 seconds, I'd like to be inside his brain. Yeah, and the, figure out what he's thinking. That's that absolute power, I think. That last one he threw, he just went and grabbed something else. It's shiny as all get out, whatever it is. Yeah, another, another big pearl. 
It's hard to guess. We know with his, he, he's got some old gems that he likes to pull out in these situations. Well, yeah, so. he'll bring out some stuff that nobody ever wouldn't even have. I'm going to have to sneak down there and see what that other ball was. So it looks like maybe one of the UFOs. Yeah. Look at the logo here. Now he's on. He's got something else on this shot. That's yep, sure is. That, that's it, like a DNA coil, I think. And they all straight. So, yeah. So, now, so, you, so <laughs> is that good or bad, right? Yeah, because we went through this before when we thought he was all lined up with the ball. Oh, he's going to throw that. The tournament starts. He throws something else. So, I. What do he pick up this time? You go back to the attention star. No, absolute power. JJ is looking to see how the ball goes through the pins. If it's not going right. through the pins the right way, he's changing balls. That's what I was thinking. So, so he struck every shot, but he's definitely watching the reaction. He's not. He's not looking at result. He's looking at what the ball is doing. Right. Troy Lent is hurt, folks. Uh, he can't. When he can't post a shot, and that's one of the strongest points of his game, you know that something's wrong. It's unfortunate, too. Solid finish for Troy. But he's going to uh, take the loss here, finish fourth. I wonder if it was just one shot that did it. He just shot 267, and all of a sudden he, he just – we saw that one where we saw him kind of – yeah, twinge, and twinge, and, and yeah. that was that was the end of that. Unfortunately, striking one for JJ. Oh, that's uh, no, didn't really get one. I thought maybe our batteries just went dead and everything just blanked out. Well, Ronald, the battery backup system when the entire center goes uh, bye bye, it's you know what, it's just not going to work so well. That's the way it goes. I didn't look outside. Is it raining? I don't know. But the way the weather's been around lately, anything can happen. Oh. I feel sorry for those people up in Iowa, the tornadoes and stuff going yeah. through there. Unbelievable. All over the place. Just a wee bit outside, leaving the 210. Look like he just kind of juiced that one a little bit. It just, I mean, the Brad always is good at just letting the ball roll on that one. That one didn't roll. And we talk about hesitations. You know, Brad's got a hesitation, but he doesn't hesitate on his spare shot because he tries to throw it harder. See, we're learning something new every day about our bowlers. John Janowitz, the only guy on our tour. Well, not the only guy. I think we have uh, Keith Lesko throws 16 pounds, but so, so does Janowitz. Yeah, there's not many. Yeah, no, I, not I many don't know of any other. And there might be, uh, but I don't know who they are throwing 16-pound equipment. Next thing I got to ask JJ is about the the holding it down setup. I mean, yeah, I think that's just to, I kind of I've been watching that a little bit too in last year. So I think that's just to uh, to to get his shoulders straight, right? Kind of get him opened up. You know, I don't know. You I know. just I'm always intrigued by new techniques and new styles and why people do what they do. Uh, just because I mean. Every bowler out there, I think, at one point in time, when you're young or maybe even when you're older, have tried to either emulate or try something that you've seen professionals do. And uh, I would just be curious to to know why the hold it down, then pick it up and start. Yeah, watch next time. I think if you see him, he, then he kind of drops his right shoulder a little bit and wiggle, and right. just kind of get his to get his shoulders going and to keep him open. 
I know you know a lot of bowlers do things to stay loose, uh, and they fidget. I mean, if when remember Michael Fagan, remember how much he bounced the ball and he took off, I and mean, he looked like Gumby going to the line. Norm Duke always fiddled with his wrist, mm -hmm. and so did Brian Voss. Uh, Pete Weber kind of has a little bit of a bounce and rock, and just things to keep them loose before they don't ever get tense when they throw a ball. I just I don't know if that's just a, a mechanism for that or just I don't know what it is. Not many people throw 16 anymore, and I, so I'm sure some people are wondering, why in the heck would you throw 16 when the 15s seem so powerful? Even some of the 14s seem extremely powerful. I, unless he's pretty much of the old school, the more mass going through the pins. Well, and you know, better. I mean, JJ, <clears throat> you know, and we've talked about it extensively for you know last year plus. Is he's a numbers guy, right? He, he's you know. He's looking for those certain numbers on the bowling ball, and he gets the numbers he likes in the 16s. That's that's a lot of it. He wants those certain RGs and diffs and all that stuff. Or I, you know what? Give me three holes, and I'm going to throw it that way. <laughs> if it comes back, I'm going to throw it again. And if you can and, do that, if you, you can yeah. throw whatever. I mean, you, you can, can throw, throw whatever you want when you can do that. It doesn't make any difference. What the hell the weight is. 16, 15, 14, 12, 20, just, yeah, when you throw it like that, you win. And he's another guy, and I, I've always been a big advocate of posting shots and being able to hold that pose and just watch the entire ball motion, ball going down the lane and ball going through the pin. So you, you get a good read on what the ball's doing and how it's going through the pin so you can make an adjustment. And J.J. is a master of just staying there, you know, kind of watching the shot. That wasn't was solid. He was stalking uh, that yeah, one. As his previous shot. But him and, like, all the guys on the show. I mean, Hess, I mean, he posts every shot. Angelo, uh, Troy Lint, J.J. It's just it's what they do. And how about those banners down there? All five players with titles on this tour, and then Johnny Petraglia's banner at the left. That's one when you're going down the list, you always just stop and take an extra long look at. Yeah. Have you seen all of the pictures and history that Laspina has in here? Oh, I'm at time. It takes forever to go. There's so much yeah, of it. Of, of Johnny and just of old bowling. Yeah. And just amazing. <clears throat> Last night we were invited out to eat with uh, John. Uh, and one of the people there was Andy Verapapa's grandson. And yeah, he I, met him, I met him today. Is the guy that wrote the book? Is that who that is? Or, uh, or he's not the guy that wrote the book. And he bowled the tournament. Oh, uh, no kidding. Yeah, uh, if I had to. It's terrible I can't remember his name. I, we, we didn't get that information. You did not? Well, I'm giving it to you. His last name wasn't Vera Papa. Because <laughs> we would we would I would have picked up on that one. I thought Andy Vera Papa was an incredible artist of the game. I asked yeah, him if Brad got quick again. Is Andy ever taught him any of those trick shots? He goes, no, I, I was too young to learn them. He goes, the only thing I know that the the ball that actually hooked right then hooked left, he goes, it had bottom weight in it. That I know. He goes, that's the only thing I know. Bottom weight is in mercury. <laughs> That's that's twice that I've noticed this game. Brad just looks like he got a little quick. Well, it's hard to believe that Brad gets quick because with that stutter step that he has also. Mm -hmm. 
Andrew Ruffalo. Okay, I didn't know that. He's just getting warmed up now. He's got such a great look. You know, I, I thought Brad, that was my pick. Uh, but, man, J.J. just, and he never shows any emotion. He just, he does his job, and that's it. I, I don't ever know if he's happy with the shot or he hates the shot. Yeah, he's really a tough one to read. <laughs> it's not stand back up, John. You're, you're okay. It's not, it's not going to stand back up. That was taken out. Watch this head pin just come smoking across and annihilate this nine pin. One bouncer. Boom. John Jenner was possible 259. 247. Brad Angelo. That hooked up early. Brad just doesn't seem as fluid with the swing at the line. No. no. To me, as he did earlier. That was choppable going in like that. 235, now the max score for Brad Angelo. John Janowitz, pace in 220s. So you, think math, that, you think that's all John Janowitz? Per the math, it's still a ball game, but watching the ball reactions, boy, it, it feels like it's, it's, it's close to being over. We know Brad's a fighter. He's a scrapper. He, he, there is no give up in that Italian. No, he took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> there you go. He just, unfortunately, in his situation, he's got to hope that Janowitz makes a mistake or gives him, you know, a couple spare shots to give him a chance to get back in the game. Well, you know, and we've had a few events. Remember, was it a few weeks ago? Was it the Villages where there's a lot of seven tens? I think Aberdeen there's a bunch of big fours. We haven't this week. There wasn't really one of those leaves that we saw a lot. We didn't see a lot of two tens. We saw a lot of strikes. So I think just make make a, a quality shot, and you're going to keep filling frames and throw some more strikes, and it's, it's going to be tough to beat. That one looked in maybe just a little, if anything, but just dead flush again. Those pins have zero chance. It's hard to argue with whatever John, John Janowitz does because his success rate at this game is pretty obvious. Whether he throws 16 pounds, what balls he picks, I mean, the layouts he picks, I, again, he's a, a technician. He, the things that he thinks about and does, he's one of a kind. He's definitely fun to watch. There's the hang down with the shoulder shrug. It's got to be a just a getting loose thing, right? Yeah, feel. Well, I said they'd be at fifth arrow before the show was over. He almost had a pin stay in the deck. I just spun around and bounced off. <laughs> it almost stayed there. How dare it. And he's at fifth arrow. Two sixty seven to win the first game to Hess's two twenty six for Troy and Lent. Two sixty nine for JJ game two over Troy's one fifty nine. JJ's putting up another number here and Brad's just trying to see if he can put some sort of pressure on him and have a chance to, to do something here. Just give me a chance. That's all he's hoping for. Oh, yeah, trips out of there. Take just, that. Yeah, take that back. JJ's was better. 
Yeah. <laughs> it was on the fly. Yeah. I mean, it was that was nice, Brad, but yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Well, Brad needs them all for 235. Nine spare strike for Janet, which would be 238. So he needs a double to force a mark. So Brad's not playing him near as deep as John. John's dead over fifth arrow. Brad's about... 22-23. That shot was much, much slower. Is Brad asking for a re-rack? Yep. Slow the pace down a little bit. See if you can get J.J. out of sync. Zero chance. <laughs> So after this tournament headed out west, there's a super senior classic in the Masters. Then right after that is the U.S. Open in Greeley, Colorado. Yeah, super <coughs> senior classic kicks off A Squad 9 a.m. Thursday, May 30th, June 3rd, the start of the Masters. Brad with a 10 pin. He's just not getting the ball to turn the corner. He's going to finish out with 224, but that's not going to be enough, I don't believe, to beat John Jones. Yeah, nine outs, 226 for J.J., unless, he, you know, some goofy four through the middle, Greek church something is the only thing that's going to stop this one. I just don't foresee J.J. doing four through the middle. No, not with the look he's got with three or four balls that are all striking. Game, set, and match. Brad Angelo moving on to bowl our tournament leader with six BBA titles, one senior master's title, Chris Warren. J.J. and Squeaks. This is the f his first show this year, and I asked him, when was the last time he made a show? And he goes, I don't even remember. <laughs> so I can't tell you that. He, and Chris finished – he bowled okay last week. He finished 15th last week, but obviously being a tournament leader this week is in a much better spot. And 60 years old. How about that? Yeah, we were talking about that. He, he, he told me he's the same age as Parker. So, Yeah, and so he'll be at uh, Wayne Webb's uh, July 2nd through the 5th at the uh, Tristan's Memorial, which is a PBA 60 event. And that that's Wald, Walder and Parker, and Chris Warren. Pete. Uh, Pete. Walter's defending champ, right? Yeah. Was that last year, Walter, or two years ago? Last, last year. Last year, Walter. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty much everybody, it's anybody that we used to watch on ABC Sports, it's going to be there. You know who else is going to be there? Tom Hess. Yes. He's not balling. But he's not balling. No, no worries. He's, 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 he's going to be not balling. <laughs> he's doing commentary. Along with Dave Lamont. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it makes a difference for J.J. I didn't see. Yeah. I mean, J.J. shot 269, 257. I don't think he has a bad lane. No. So. Have J.J. start the match? He's averaging, what, 263, 263 and a half? You know? Yeah. It, it's all good. I mean, one thing, remember, is when J.J., the 10th frame of game one, tried three different balls in the 10th on the left lane, he struck every time. So maybe don't let him finish there, and that's going to be what's going on. Well, you know that it, J.J., it's all about how the ball is going through the pins. He could care less what ball it is, what color it is. It's How does it go through the pins? Well, championship match right now. John Janowitz, our reigning rookie of the year, taking on Chris Warren, the legend of the sport. Looking for a second title on this tour. 
But Chris hasn't been able to come out a lot, and he said he won the, the Masters, the Senior Masters in 2018. You know, that's six years ago, and we don't see him out here a whole bunch. Like you said, he was on the east, uh, West Coast so far that it was a lot of travel time. Yeah, know? West Coast, and, and, and his son was, was playing baseball in high school, so, you know, he wanted to be around for that, and uh, now we get the opportunity that, that he's here. So here's a good stat for you. Between these two guys, they've got three titles. All majors. majors. <laughs> I knew where you were going with that. All majors. It's not a bad stat to have. No, no, not at all. I'm just here for the big ones. <laughs> You'll get your title someday. Nope. Got a bowl first. Kind of like the lottery. You, you don't play. play. You're not winning. Pesky little 10 pin to start for Chris Warren. Takes care of that. No problem. And he, he talked to me earlier this week, too. He's just he's just not sharp. I mean, the, he's leading the tournament, bowling great, but he just knows he's just, he just doesn't have the reps in, in competition, is, you know, to, to be sharp and just not have to think so much. Right? Well, I think he's going to hit more tournaments this year. So if he hits the Masters, goes to the U.S. Open, comes back to Columbus for the, the 60, by that time he's going to be pretty sharp. That's a lot of games. I'm tired you, just thinking about it. Chris Warren in at fifth arrow. So that's the place to be. I feel good. I called that a long time ago. They're not. He's not playing them both the same. That looked uh, quite a bit different. Tom, what do you think it could take to win this game? 230s, 240s? 248. Okay. That might have been right at 26 at the Euros that time. He's creeping in. He's just getting warmed up. He makes it look absolutely effortless to play in there. <clears throat> Problem is that, I mean, on your home house patterns, that are 15 to 1 or whatever they are, 12 to 1, it, it's hard to even practice in there because it's so much oil there. You, you can't, you, your ball never receives it and it never reads it the right way. And so when you have to get in there, like when you come out here, it's kind of foreign to you. And besides, out here the guys break them down different than they do at home anyway, you know. Different. That was faster. like 27, 28, messenger <laughs> out the five pin. That Come might have on. been just a hair bit too deep. Come on. That's just not even fair. Yeah, that was like 27. This is a PBA 50 tour. You don't messenger out five pins. Yes, you do. <laughs> Chris Warren doesn't have to use a spare ball. He's got the ability to back it up. You watch him. He's as much as he has cup in his wrist and then breaks it and that rubber band arm swing and almost a 4-9 rolls those out. Check the name on the back of his shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm Chris Warren. Squeaks. Yeah, he squeaked that one out. He sure did. He's trying to squeak out a win. You know, actually... If John, John Janowitz wins this, J.J., it's easy to say, it'd be his first regular title. Yeah. He's only got majors out here. <laughs> only majors. Well, it would be Chris Warren's only regular uh, title. On this here. tour, yeah. yeah he's won, he's tour. won some other two regular. Uh, he's got five regulars and a, and a Masters on, the, on the, the kids' tour. He said he's got six regulars. That's what it told me. Oh, yeah, six titles, one of one the Masters. Five, five regular plus a major. That's what I meant. Is that where you're going with that? Yeah. Okay. Adds up to five plus one is six. <laughs> 58 regionals. He's been stuck on that 58 number for a while. Well, I don't know if he bulls him that much anymore. But, I mean, now that he's got a shop up and going, he might bull some more. But then again, how many regionals are in Texas? I mean, I've never bowled one down there. But yeah, a lot of Oklahoma, Jonesboro, <clears throat> that part of the part but of the country. Anywhere you're going to a region of Texas is probably a 14-hour drive. You're not wrong there.
John, uh, JJ. I'm going to quit saying John Jano. It's just too much of a Yeah, I said John there. Like I got confused. <laughs> I was talking about JJ. <laughs> JJ with the front four. Chris Warren, spare three-bagger. JJ in the fifth. That was nine back and one up. <laughs> that one went to the pin setter. I tell you what, this is a fun match to watch. These are two guys that we didn't see a lot in any of the, you know, a lot of the tours on shows. To see these guys battling out here um, for for a title on this PBA 50 tour, it's good stuff. He's about 23 at the arrows. Date, I. We got a slugfest going on. That's the kind yeah, of thing you want to see. There is no four nine chance there. You're talking about driving in Texas, see, down here in Clearwater. I mean, to get to the Florida state line, I think it's like seven hours to get there. So I mean, if you're going to Georgia or West Virginia or Carolinas, and it's probably a good 12, 13 hour trip to go bowl regional there. I could drive from my house in Michigan to Dallas quicker than I could drive from East Texas to West Texas. <laughs> That's how big it is. And the speed limit's 85 miles an hour half the, half the trip. Not in the motorhome, it isn't. <laughs> well, the speed limit is, but the motorhome just won't do it. Just a wobbly oh. 10. That looked much better than that. He's coming back shaking his head, thought it was much better than it also. A lot of game left. A pair of 10 pins for no. Chris. All strikes for JJ so far. Well, if you got the ability to throw a, your strike ball as a spare ball, because you can back it up or throw it that straight, it just gives you one extra ball in your arsenal. Sure. Instead of having to carry around a spare ball. You know, Chris might be a 16-pound guy, too. I'm not sure. I know he kind of bounces back and forth. Somebody in the chat might know that answer. Somebody in Dallas. Somebody knows. Some, somebody's name who rhymes with Dallas, Dell. <laughs> I don't know. I think he throws 15. He doesn't even weigh 16 pounds hardly. Yeah, that's that's a fact. <laughs> Before I forget, let's make sure we give a big shout out to John Laspina, Joe Laspina, John Abert here, the staff, our tournament host here at Maple Lane's Countryside here in Clearwater. It's been a great week. They gave us a nice meal tonight. It's been awesome all week long, and we appreciate them. John's one of the uh, the mainstays host on this PBA 50 tour, whether it's here in Florida or in New York, any of his centers. Ooh, little hey. light mixer there. Hey, he's playing that left lane a little bit farther in. That looked like it was around 28. I mean, he could hit that left side and just be. That was, yeah, 28 to 10 down lane. That's exactly what he's thinking. He's like, I can't throw it any better than that. I can't say it with his accent, but that's that's what he was saying. And it's so frustrating. When you you rev it up, the ball makes a turn like that. It looks dead flush. And it's obviously, it didn't go through the pins. You leave a 10 pin. And with a match like this with... JJ with the front seven, you can't afford not to be striking. Well, that six pin just went around the ten pin like it was standing still, and it was. It was with authority. Still got 258 out there, but JJ front seven. And remember what we saw JJ do in, in his closeout match uh, earlier 
you know, went front 10. So he's not afraid to strike. There's no, no. question about that. No, he, he shot uh, 289 and against David Leverage the last match to, to get to the round of eight. And you see Chris is still he's still thinking that 10 pin. He's just, oh, come on. All right, check it off. Deep breath. Get back on it. It's hard. For, you need that short memory, but it's, boy, it's hard to have that sometimes, isn't it? Oh, unbelievable. So J.J.'s playing him about 28. Chris just cost 25, and that ball checked up a little sooner. That's where J.J. is such a technician is, is seeing what the lane is doing. Clean through eight, but that's not the thing you want to hear when you're bowling against J.J. and he's got the front seven at you. I don't think 246 is going to cut it. No. And I'm way off. Well, of I mean, you said it's going to take 248 to win, and you're right. 246 is, is not enough. 248 can be enough either. That looked like he got that way too far right. Well, I can't see what he's crossing, but he got it. Oh, instead of three. instead of hitting ten down lane, he got that out to look like six seven. Ball just didn't make the turn. What Bobby you could call that one? Just a bit outside. Even though there's a week off before our super senior action takes place, don't forget you can watch PBA Junior from Polaire, North Brunswick, the old Carolair Lanes this weekend. I'll be up there with some great young athletes, three different divisions, starting Saturday morning. Tune in and join us. Watch the future of our sport right here on Bull TV. DNA Coil. Going down the lane. Yeah, he's been using a different ball. <coughs> changing balls in each lane there. He does that a lot. He throws two different balls. Nine out gives him 247 in the tenth if he doesn't do anything else. 246 the max score for Chris Warren. So we're right back to where we were last game. Chris needs to strike out and JJ needs to do something. He needs to show really up. weird. Yeah, really to, weird. To, to, to not win this title. Uh oh, I thought that was left off his hand. Well, I think it was. I how did that, that back up? I think he just played fallback and didn't mean to play fallback. I mean, right there it looked wow. like. Wow, I thought it was dead through the nose. I think he found some shim. <laughs> there was a shim there. Oh, he smokes. I think JJ's using a UFO alert on one lane and a DNA coil on the other. And doesn't need a spare ball. Hasn't used it much today. No, and when he does, he uses that U uh, seventy eight, I think. Fifth arrow. That time it wasn't high either. Added a little bit more speed. It looks like he's going to shoot two forty six, but that's not going to be enough. JJ's got to show up. This one gets him in the 240s. A slight yeah. glimmer of yeah. hope, but it's, it's going to be pretty difficult. One more for 246. And what? 
Yeah, this is not, not, re- not, nine yeah, this is not reality, but you've got to hope J.G. gets a four count. That's well, yeah, I mean, that's what, it's, it's going to take something. You know, I mean, Greek Church, four through the middle. I mean, that, that's the only watch out. You know, there, something really odd would have to happen. Yeah, like the power go out again. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, that would never happen, would it? Worked out in our favor this time was during the practice session. We didn't miss any action. Your fans at home didn't miss a bit of action either. We just had to scramble and push a bunch of buttons. Brian did a fantastic job getting us back on the air. Thanks, BK. Did that not look high also? A little. But it, a little bit. A little bit, but. But it's fill ball. It doesn't matter. It's the fill ball. Yeah, that's, it was fifth. Okay. Fill ball's always strike. It doesn't make any difference where you throw it. I think JJ just changed balls again. That looked like an absolute power. We just went down the lane. Not that it's any consolation for Chris, but look, JJ strike series in the two seventies. I mean, it's tough to beat that, right? But boy, what a what a ball game! What a performance by both players! What a step ladder! It was a great step ladder. I mean, with all the majors we had. Didn't make a difference. I, even though he wanted it, it doesn't make a difference. 268. Well, look at our games. 267 game one where 269 game two, 257 game three, and 268 here. That's some good numbers. Yeah. That's a good thing. Congratulations right, to J.J. for his first regular PBA 50 title. Champion, Vinny 